Today we're installing the Mad Jack 6 inch double A arm lift kit designed for the club car precedent. Included in this kit are the rear blocks, the rear upper shock mounts, the front upper A arms, your main lift, a hardware pack, your two front spindles, and thread locking adhesive. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is switch your cart into tow, turn the key switch off, chalk the rear tires, and lift your cart up on jack stands. To begin the installation, we need to remove our front bumper. you also notice, for video purposes, we remove the front cowl. We're going to take a 13 16 socket and remove and retain the front hub and nut on the spindles. Now, using an 18 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter wrench, we're going to remove and retain the nut on the bottom of the tie rod. Then we're going to take a 13 millimeter socket and remove the bolt from the lower mount of the shock. Do not retain. Now we're going to repeat this process on the other side. Next thing we're going to do is remove the three factory bolts from the front of the steering rack and retain using a half inch socket. Then we're going to use the same half inch socket and remove the two bolts that hold the factory A-arms on. Make sure to retain your hardware. Next we're going to remove the front suspension by taking out the four bolts located under the bottom of the spring plate. We're going to retain the spring plate only. You'll notice on this cart that we have a low pro lift block in place. Uh, we're going to use a 17 millimeter socket here, but if you have factory parts, you need to use a 10 millimeter socket. Our first step for installing the Mad Jacks lift kit is to install the new Mad Jacks upper A arms. You'll notice the shock mount. The shock mount is offset towards the front of the cart. We're going to use the retain hardware and reattach these in the OEM locations. You'll also notice a grease fitting. Once you have the A-arm attached, we're gonna grease these fittings before we move any further. Now we're gonna repeat this process on the other side. To attach the new lifted front suspension, we're going to take our old spring plate that we retained from earlier, place it under the lift kit, and then attach using the 45 millimeter hardware provided in the kit. A floor jack or extra set of hands are helpful to hold the lift kit in place. Make sure to use thread locking adhesive. We can now reattach the steering rack using the retained hardware. Once all three bolts are in place, then tighten. We're going to replace our factory spindles with new 6 inch spindles. This is the passenger side. The tab that mounts the tie rod goes towards the front of the cart. We're going to attach it to the upper A arm and the lower A arm using the supplied bolts. Once both bolts are in place, we're going to use our thread locking adhesive and run it around the bolt. We're going to use a 3 8 drive and tighten the hardware. Now we're going to attach our tie rod in to our new spindle using the retained hardware. Now we need to install a new cotter pin. Next we're going to reattach our factory shock to our new A-arm using the 50 millimeter hardware provided. We're going to repeat this process on the other side.
Reinstall your hubs using the retain nut from earlier. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. Before we install our new tires, we need to make sure we grease the fittings located on the lower A-arms. At this point, we're done with the front lift kit. You can put your new tires on, reinstall your bumper, and lower your cart. We're going to move back to the rear end. Now to the back of the cart. You'll notice that we have the rear tires pulled off. We've also removed our rear body for video purposes only. We also have the rear of the cart jacked up on jack stands and the front wheels chopped. We're going to use a 5.8 socket and loosen, but do not remove, the two nuts located at the bottom of the U-bolt. We're going to do the same thing on the rear shock. We want to loosen the nut, but do not remove. If you loosen this side and then go to loosen the other side, the rear axle and motor will roll on you. So we're going to leave this slightly attached so that it'll help hold the motor in place. Now we're going to move to the other side. At this point, you'll notice that we have a floor jack supporting the rear axle and the rear motor. We're going to remove the U-bolt as well as the shock and the spring. Once we do that, a lot of weight on the motor is going to want to come down. You want to make sure you have your floor jack in place to hold the weight. We're going to take a 5 8 socket and remove the two nuts on the bottom of the U-bolt. Then we're going to take a 9 16 socket and remove the nut as well as the bushings and retain from the bottom of the shock. Now we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket and remove and retain the rear bolt that holds the rear leaf spring on. Next, we're going to remove the front bolt of the rear leaf spring and retain as well. At this point, the only thing that's holding the rear end in place is the floor jack and the hardware that we left in place on the other side. So now we're going to take our rear leaf spring off. Now we're going to lower the rear end and insert our spring on top of the axle and reattach. We're going to leave our brake cable unattached until the very end. You will notice two different size sets of rear lift blocks. The short blocks are for carts where you're putting HD springs on the rear. The taller blocks are for OEM springs. The angle of the top of the block goes towards the front of the cart. You're going to take this rear lift block and set it on top of the rear axle and use your floor jack to bring it up to the bottom side of your rear leaf spring. You want to make sure that the leaf springs nut on the bottom side lines up with the hole in the top of the rear lift block. Now we're going to take the rear shock plate and install it on top of the spring and attach our shock using our factory hardware. Using the hex head hardware supplied in your kit, we're going to attach it to the factory rear shock plate in the middle hole here. With the head of the bolt inserting into the bottom hole of the rear axle. We're going to tighten it with the nut. Now we're going to install our U-bolt down through the new shock plate and down through the old factory shock plate. and tighten using the 17 millimeter socket. Make sure both sides are tightened equally. Now that we have our U-bolts attached, we need to tighten our shock nut. Now we can move to the other side and repeat these same steps.
Once we're done on the passenger side, you can install your new tires. Now that we have our lift kit installed, we're going to show you how to align your front end. First thing we're going to do is show you how to fix your camber. You're going to need a straight edge, either a board or a framing square like this. You want to place it along your tire. Anywhere that you see a gap, whether it's on the top or the bottom side of your square, you're going to need to adjust your camber accordingly. To adjust the camber, you're going to need to loosen up the nuts on the lower heim joint. We're going to place the cart up on a floor jack so we can get the weight off the tires and adjust our nuts. So on this particular cart, the gap was on the bottom side of our framing square, which means the bottom of the tire needs to come out. So we're going to loosen up the nuts. We're going to bring the bottom of the tire out a quarter inch and then retighten our nuts. Now we're going to lower the cart back down, double check this side. If we're good, we're going to move to the other side. Now that your camber is correct, we're going to move on to the front alignment. What we're going to do here is make sure that your steering wheel is straight. We've already done that here. As you can see, our passenger tire is off pretty good. Our driver's side is off a little bit as well. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get the tires aligned on the front. To do this, we're going to loosen the nut located right here by the tie rod end and spin our steering rack rod here. We're going to do this on both sides. First thing we want to do is make sure that our tires are straight coming off of the side of the cart. Then we're going to make sure that the front of the tires are a quarter inch to three eighths out in the front than in the rear. So what you're going to do is measure across the front. If it's wider in the front by a quarter to three eighths, than it is on the back side of the tires, you're good to go. So after our first adjustment, our tires are about one inch out. So we're gonna bring each side in about a quarter inch. We're gonna readjust and then measure our tires one more time. Now that you have your toe out adjusted, you will need to drive your cart around and come back and check it again. You may have to repeat this a few times until it stays correct. We recommend that you check your toe in and out, as well as your camber, every few months. Once you have your alignment done, you're now finished installing your Mad Jack 6-inch A-arm lift kit designed for the club car precedent.